I'm Cory Brock, and welcome to the Neo Geo Pocket Archives. With the release of Nintendo's Game Boy Color, SNK found themselves in an unfortunate situation, having just released the monochrome Neo Geo Pocket. In order to stay competitive, SNK debuted the Neo Geo Pocket Color in March of 1999 in Japan, just five months after the previous monochrome handheld's launch. The Neo Geo Pocket Color would eventually make its way to North America in August and to Europe in October of the same year. Unfortunately, due to SNK's financial troubles at the time, the Neo Geo Pocket line would be discontinued in North America and Europe in June of 2000, and in Japan in 2001. Though it had a short life, the Neo Geo Pocket Color did prove profitable during its run. Its library offers scaled-down versions of many of SNK's arcade titles, a trend established with the monochrome system before it, as well as games that span a variety of genres. One of the system's earliest games which we'll take a look at is the King of Fighters R2. The King of Fighters R2, much like KOF R1 for the monochrome Neo Geo Pocket, is a scaled-down version of a specific arcade entry in the King of Fighters series. In this instance, KOF R2 is based on the King of Fighters 98, arguably one of the most popular entries in the King of Fighters series. KOF R2 therefore follows the same structure presented in KOF 98, including many of the stages you'd find in its arcade counterpart, as well as the same final boss. However, due to memory limitations on the handheld cartridges, the roster in KOF R2 is dramatically scaled down. Here you have 14 fighters to initially choose from, with 9 other characters to unlock as you play. The overall presentation of KOF R2 is very similar to that of KOF R1, albeit now in color. The characters themselves are presented in a super deformed style, and the overall mechanics have been adjusted to accommodate the Neo Geo Pocket Color's limited number of buttons. Light attacks are still done by quickly tapping either punch or kick, while the heavy attacks are performed by holding in the buttons longer. Overall, it's much of what you'd expect from what was established on the monochrome Neo Geo Pocket. However, the King of Fighters R2 does address one issue that KOF R1 had, a lack of content. Whereas KOF R1 only presented you with a single player arcade mode and head to head two player mode, KOF R2 adds a new mode called Making Mode to go along with the arcade and versus modes. In Making Mode, you get to select your character and progress through missions which typically have specific criteria or certain conditions you must compete with. Here you'll face opponents with regenerating health, fight through a series of characters without the ability to block, and so on. What makes this mode interesting is the ability to equip your chosen fighter with skills. These skills can add new attacks to your character or supplement their fighting ability. In addition to Making Mode, KOF R2 also included support for the Dreamcast Link Cable. By linking your Neo Geo Pocket Color to the Dreamcast version of King of Fighters 98, which was retitled to the King of Fighters 1999 Dream Match for the Dreamcast, you can unlock extra abilities for your Making Mode Fighter as well as art galleries on the Dreamcast. Making Mode alone is enough to give KOF R2 tons of replay value, and the support for the Dreamcast Link Cable is a novel addition. Even without these new features, KOF R2 would stand as a solid game in the Neo Geo Pocket Colors library, but the added replay value is enough to warrant tracking down a copy. It continues the great quality established with the monochrome games, and serves as an excellent handheld version for arguably one of the most popular arcade entries in the King of Fighters series.